is DDK and yet we are back, back, back again to win to show you guys how to get these dividends. In today's video, guess what baby? We have a special guest. I know you guys are wondering who the special guest is. I already told you guys who the special guest was a few videos ago in yesterday's video baby. But you probably get a pop like Chris Cole. Our special guest is the owner, CEO, and founder of the Delivered app. Delivered app is spelled D-L-I-V-R-D, Delivered. If you want to sign up for Delivered, make sure you click the link in the description and also use the referral code Jerome Adams. Everything you need to know is right in the description, baby. But we are going to do a order with him as well as ask him a few questions, baby. So some of those questions that you guys ask in the comment section, I definitely will be asking him those questions. But there's no question, we're about to get to this money like it ain't funny. The pickup place is Job Burritos. We're trying to get these Cheetos. That's cheese, just in case you was wondering. The order cost is $359. We are going to drive 11 miles and receive a payment of $53.30. about to show you we worthy. Let's go. How you doing, Chris? <laughs> where, did, where is, is you? Where are you from? Philly. Philly? Yeah. Oh, you from Philly? Oh, shout yeah. out to the Philly. So, how long did it take you to get here? From Philly? Yeah. Well, I came. I was in San Diego. Went to Boston. Came from Boston to here, here last night. Dang. And, and then, I go back and then, to Philly tonight. And then you got to go to Minnesota. You said right? Or are you I'm still going to skip one? Minnesota? Okay. Hello. How you doing? I'm gonna have an easy catering order to pick up. All right, for ten forty, right? They're working on it. 10.50, yeah. Yeah, should be ready anytime. I'll let you know. Here's okay. Together? Yeah, yeah. All right, I got it. All right, thank you. 2,000 years later. This for me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> it's just these two? Yeah. Okay. There's like six trays in total. Three, three trays right there, three trays. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. So this is what I do, I put it right here. I was like, how's it not gonna slide everywhere? I was nope. Uh, we got this too. Yeah. Now strap it with this. Yeah. To make sure it don't move. Bam, but then when we get there, I got the wagon. Yeah. I ain't bragging I got the wagon. I'm gonna use the wagon. <laughs> We're gonna roll it right in and we're gonna get these dividends. It's like you've done this before. Plenty of times. I'm out here on the ground. Let's go. Just like that, we are here to drop off location. Y'all know what we're doing, baby. My guy Chris here. Y'all see what's going on. Go ahead and grab that. You know what that is? It's like a dolly. We ain't bragging, we got that wagon. This the wagon. Little red get, wagon. Get so much money, our pants say. So we're gonna put these in there. Make it very easy for us. That's what got a little weight to it, don't it? Yeah, yeah. It's time for us to go get it in and get these dividends. Y'all know we gonna win. Just like that, we are downstairs at the lunchroom. They got big tables down here. I'm guessing this probably is the safest, smartest one, I would think. Some chairs around? Yeah. Well, we're gonna run with this. They ain't labeled anything, so. Well, that stuff labeled. Burning up, scorching. <laughs> Joints, he is scorched. Almost burnt your fingers off. Huh? <laughs> oh, I probably don't got no service down here. I gotta throw it away and come back. Hopefully, the app don't mess up on me. Well, at least you get to see it mess up on me if you're here. <laughs> yeah, I'll always uh, I take a picture in my camera roll and then upload it because smart man. Let me try it. You know, you have service that you get in the elevator and, and then, then it goes you lose off. service and you lose the picture. Yeah. Now we gotta step back into the photo. You already know those. Smack! Got that. And we are good to go. Let's go. And we are here with my guy Chris, baby. Who is Chris? Chris is the owner of Delivered. Founder, CEO. He run the whole thing. He out there getting that green. Now, 
I made a video and asked you guys to ask some questions and we have plenty of questions to ask my guy Chris and he said we can ask him whatever we want to know except for how much you get paid that's it other than that we can ask him anything else now I just want to say I appreciate my guy Chris for coming out and he took his flight just for us he had some other stuff he had to do but that's canceled so he came all the way to Chicago from Philly so we can get busy so I need you guys to comment below and give him a thumbs up just for that now do you want to say anything? No, I just appreciate you having me come out and doing the delivery with you. Super excited to do the interview. Okay. So, question number one. What criteria do you use to decide who you send the order to? Yeah, so as everybody knows, we send orders out a day in advance and we give everybody some time to, to accept them. And what we do is we build driver profiles. So when you tell us what kind of vehicle size you have, how many catering bags you have, how many catering bags you've bought from the store, and how many orders you've done, uh, it matches you with orders. So we don't just arbitrarily send orders to drivers and hope that they can complete them. Uh, we're sending orders out to drivers based upon the information that we have. And that's why it's important if you get a bigger car, or you get a smaller car or you get more catering bags you let us know so that way we can update our system so the AI can make sure that it's pairing you with the right orders number two is there a way to receive more orders Probably the biggest question that comes through our chat line, our phone support when I'm out there and I see other other people out there driving, like, hey, great to meet you. How do I get more orders, right? Like instant at our driver engagement events, it's always the hot topic. I can tell everybody emphatically, we are working to get more orders on the platform, right? Uh, up until this year, we didn't have a sales staff. It was all organic growth. It was me. It was customers that saw us deliver for uh, their competitors or their other platforms uh, and they were reaching out to us. But now we have salespeople, we have account managers, so we're working diligently to get more orders in the hands of drivers. The easiest way to get more orders though is take the orders that you are sent, right? So a lot of people see an order come in, it has a lower earning, right? The system's only gonna offer drivers low earnings for up to the first 10 orders because everybody wants to be like, I'm the best driver, I'm always gonna show up, but we can't risk being fined on an order that's a thousand bucks uh, if we don't have a track record he's showing up for those hundred fifty dollar subtotal orders so the easiest way is really to just take what's sent to you and build that rapport and the system thrives off that also take advantage of that new open board orders show up there at eight o'clock local market time uh, and saying yes to same day orders really helps in like getting that trust built on the system so really right now it's just take advantage of of the orders that are sent to you and know that right now too it's summertime it's a little bit slower so we're going to creep through the rest of the month of august we're going to creep through probably the first week in september uh, and then we should see a solid spike in volume through the rest of the year uh, and then again in january it'll be a little bit slower so like july 4th to the end of the summer is always a slow period and then from christmas to like the middle of end of january is another slow period question number three we are here getting busy why are the open orders not located on the app so when I first started the company in 2018, I purchased the base code of the Delivered Driver app from a firm. Uh, so there are certain things that I can't change in the Driver app and adding like custom pages or, or custom features like that is one of them. So there's a couple things that the app lacks that we're, we're well, well aware of and we're looking to make changes. Uh, we're hoping to make a technology change at some point this year and hopefully, I hate quoting things in public because then people hold me to it. So I'm just gonna say at some point in 2024, we should have a new driver app experience. Our goal is from the time that a driver says they are interested in, an or, or interested in delivering for the platform to the time that they are paid, you are living in 100% the delivered ecosystem so we can have full control over that driver journey and really just try and take a, an ordinary experience and make it extraordinary for the drivers. So uh, there's some stuff that we just can't do. That's one of it, but we didn't want to wait on releasing the open order board and having that opportunity for people to claim orders until we had full control of the tech stack. So that's why you see it as a, as a standalone web app. The one plus side is it is the framework to the future of 
of a driver ecosystem where the login that all the drivers have created now is the login that will be used for the next couple features that are coming out down the road. So it's all in like a grand plan together. Somehow we'll uh, we'll make it all work. We always we always seem to find a way. Okay, so now I'm adding on to that. Is it possible to put it in notifications, in the notifications part? The, like, the notifications part, the notifications, the push notifications in the app are kind of, they're un, unreliable, to say the best. So that's why we lean so heavy on text messaging. A lot of apps use push notifications, but we, uh, we found in the original iteration of Delivered, we used, uh, our chat was built into the app and all the notifications were in the app, but then we were getting uh, drivers men mentioning that they weren't able, they weren't getting the notifications, they weren't seeing the chats because they had to rely on better data service. They had to rely on the, the app settings being correct to allow notifications. A lot of people turn that stuff off. So we went to an SMS based system to meet the drivers where they are. Everybody texts and you can't turn off a notification is like in an app for that. So it's just easier to go to go with the text. Eventually, the idea is to just kind of make it where it's a pattern. We're not gonna send a message out every day at eight o'clock. People are just gonna go in and, and kind of check. Uh, and then if drivers are a part of the Emerald Elite, which is the top 10% of drivers in a market, they get access to the open order board 30 minutes early. So that's I one of the best. I you know about the lead thing. Yeah, uh, yeah, Emerald Elite is for the top 10 drivers in each market. Everybody should have got an email that says, this is how many orders you have, this is how many orders you need to take to be a part of Emerald Elite. Um, but you can always email drive at delivered.io and ask for a standing there. Uh, Emerald Elite gives you early access on the order board. Uh, you get access to higher earning orders first. And our auto assigner, Frederick, which is who pushes all the orders out, the AI system uh, goes to Emerald Elite 30 minutes before you're uh, like a non-Emerald driver. So uh, plus they have a dedicated account rep on our driver engagement team for the Emerald drivers. So, you know, there's a lot of perks there and that ties right back to the original thing. And just the way to get more orders, the way to be part of Emerald Elite is to just, you know, do the orders that are sent. It seems counterintuitive. Like I don't want to take this $20 order. I don't want to take this $22 order, but it will help get the bigger orders down the line. Everybody wants the big bad orders up front, but they're there. You just need to you just need to work towards them. So as you guys just heard, just stay tuned and stick around, baby. The changes are coming. You just gotta be patient. This stuff takes time. Nothing was built overnight. They said, hey, when in Rome, do as the Rome is doing. My name is Rome, so do as I do. Be patient and stay calm. Now, I get this question all the time. Is it in my city? Is it in this city? Is it in that city? Is it in that city? How do they find out if Deliver is in their city? So the, uh, the easiest way to find out, if you go to Deliver.io slash drive, you can pick uh, which country, United States or Canada. We're in, uh, we're in both, and then you can choose your state, uh, and then you can choose your metro from there. We're in 151 markets uh, across the U.S. and Canada. Uh, some of those are a little deceiving, uh, like DFW is a market on the list there, but that's Dallas, Fort Worth. So it's technically two cities in one market. Yeah. Uh, DC Metro is another one where it's technically like Maryland, Virginia, DC so that 151 market is kind of unique to us it's a little bit a little bit larger uh, for the most part we're there if you go to the website and you don't see a market there and you're there and you're interested in taking orders you can always email drive at deliver.io and say hey I'm in XYZ market uh, and we'll get you in a wait list as our demand partners send us volume for there ask us if we can open up in those areas then we'll have a jumping point to get you some orders now, y'all heard what he said, but I want to say this. Make sure that you do your own homework first. Don't just email them first. Make sure you go to the website. Like he said, what is it again? Deliver.io slash drive. Deliver.io slash drive. Google that. Then you're going to go to the website and find out what's in your area. Don't just email them first. You're trying to be lazy, baby. You, they got a lot of stuff they got to do. Now, question number five. Realistically, does your company take feedback from drivers into consideration when making updates or changes to the app or process? 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we try our best to handle constructive feedback. Uh, we do get a lot of feedback like, I need more orders, you know, <laughs> give me more orders. We all do. Uh, right, you know, there's, there's a difference between a complaint and constructive feedback. And we listen to all of them, we really do. Uh, with the constructive feedback, you can see little changes in things that have been inspired by drivers. Uh, so little tweaks in the text message that goes out about what time the pickup is. Originally, the text message that went out didn't have that. Uh, and a driver's like, that would be great. You know, that would be great to know. People wanted to see things like the mileage. So we added a mileage field in the bottom of, uh, of the delivery information. So we take these things and if, if it makes measurable sense and it's not gonna break a lot of technology, then yeah, uh, we're, we're totally into it because at the end of the day, uh, the drivers are out the one doing it all the time. And without delivery drivers, we wouldn't be a delivery platform. Uh, we also require everybody in our office, any like full-time delivered employee has to go out once a quarter and take orders. Uh, so I go out once a quarter, if not more, do deliveries, use the app, look for things that I don't like in it as well, and then send that off to our product team to see if they can make it better. And that is how you should run a business. Hey, everybody should be out there taking orders because y'all need to know what's going on with books on the ground, not in the, uh, in the computer lab, typing in stuff dang that's it's a big difference between the two so and uh, i'll be back one thing there too and off of this what i'll do is by time this airs i will create an email address of suggestions at deliver.io okay. and it can be an email just for drivers to email in suggestions or things that they would like to see or they would want to do better and i'll make sure that goes right to the product team and i'll even have it cc myself on the email as well so i can see the direct feedback that people want and make it easier for people to you know to send their ideas that's a hey. hey he out here making it happen baby now question number 6 we out here in the mix would you consider taking one gig driver from each state to do a Zoom call for Q&A? Yeah, that's a great question. We had a couple uh, Zoom calls with clients. Clients asked us if they could talk with some drivers about their orders in specific. And uh, we connected drivers with the clients uh, to allow for communication between the two for the client to better understand the delivery journey and for the driver to better understand the client's desires and needs. Uh, one thing we do have coming up soon is driver town halls. We're gonna try and start hosting those where drivers can join and uh, we'll have a segment there where it's ask the hard questions and it'll be uh, we'll solicit questions ahead of time kind of like this and people can can send those in and we're gonna pick the hard ones the ones that people wouldn't expect us to answer and put those out there uh, and then a part of the Emerald Elite is an Emerald Elite call where those elite people get to come on and join a call with leadership once a quarter as well but yeah I mean I'm open to talking with drivers uh, we do the driver engagement events as well in different metros this month it was in Boston next month is Denver so uh, we we try Try and make sure we have open communication as much as possible, but I'm always open to new ways to, to communicate with drivers. Okay. Well, as you guys just heard, he just made a very great point, which I like a lot. He just said that people who are Emerald Elite, they can already ask questions, right? So, hey, if you want to ask some questions, make sure you become Emerald Elite. I ain't even Emerald Elite. I ain't even know nothing about it, but hey, question number seven. Question number seven. Three of them. Question number seven. At what rate do you anticipate an increase in orders over the next year? Ooh, such a loaded question. We've grown she came up that question, 3x. That. It's a great question. Uh, we've grown 3x every year since 2018. Last year, we 4 x as far as order volume. This year, uh, you can't... Once you get so high, it's hard It's hard to keep going. So I'm a little sad. We're only going to... We're pro uh, projecting like a 2x, uh, 2x bump from the previous year. But that being said, the fourth quarter is still coming. So we could see a two and a half, maybe we could stretch to three more. Uh, we do have some new great integrations coming. Uh, if I opened up like my Slack channel right now, I think we're working on- Oh, sorry, sorry to cut you off. You got yeah. Slack? Yeah. Okay, I'm adding you on Slack. I got okay. Slack too from Dropbox. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so if I looked, if I pulled up my Slack right now, we're probably in the midst of anywhere from 15 to 20 integrations with different order demand partners. And it could be anything from individual restaurant brands to e-commerce companies uh, or other like order aggregators. So we have some exciting stuff coming. Uh, I, I would love to confidently say that by the end of 2024, we will have tripled our order volume uh, from what it's currently at. 
as far as just in the straight catering space and with some of the other integrations coming and some of the other spaces moving into as far as like the e-com world uh we could probably see you know uh, I mean, multiples of that. So really, I guess it's really just keeping an open mind and like, yeah, I'm going to try this order. I'm going to take it. I'm going to take this lower earning order, uh, you know, just just take it, see what happens and then provide that feedback. So we know if it's working or if it's not. And that's how you do it, baby. We have to see if it's working or not. So you already said he already put me on the team. No. <laughs> you know, oh, look, I already look. I told you in a live, my guy, Chris, if he want to pay for some marketing, we, could, uh, we already told him right now today. We can put the wrap on the van so we can get these bands. As long as it can be like my head and I'm just like thumbs hey, up. Hey, Chris, <laughs> let me tell you this. I don't care what you put on See there. See me driving around Chicago. I don't everywhere. care what you put on there. As long as I get paid, I don't care what you put on there. Question okay. number eight, don't be good, be great. And don't be fake. Now, what are your top five busiest cities? Oof, I should. I really should know this. We just talked about the top ten the other day. Number one is is undoubtedly New York City. New York City is our top metro. I'd say next would be San Francisco. Um, I'm gonna venture, and like, probably not like in exact order, but definitely New York, San Francisco, Austin, Texas. Um, right, either like Fort Lauderdale, Miami. So let's just call it South Florida. And then uh, it would probably be like a pretty decent tie for the top fifth, like Denver, DC, um, would probably be, would probably like be really close there. So, you know, some of the some of the bigger cities have the the bigger demand. So, yeah. what's fun is like New York City, like a historically hard market to like pick up and deliver food in because because their catering orders, most driver all drivers there are still using cars in Manhattan, uh, and we boast an 86% on time rate, which is lower than most other markets. Well, that's New York. Right for New York, I think 80 86% is like 120%. Yeah. Like it's I think it's that's a good number. So, question number nine. Y'all see we out here in the grind. Hey, take some time and hit that thumbs up and make sure you smash the subscribe button if you are not subscribed. Question number nine, how do you figure out what the base pay is going to be? Yeah, so base fee is basically calculated off of what we're getting paid for that order. So for us, obviously delivered has to make some money. We have overhead, our insurance is crazy expensive. Our technology costs are a lot. Before an order even comes in, like before an order even makes it to a driver's app, we've already paid Google Maps, uh, the regular like Google routing API, like you're probably talking just like a quarter just every time that order just touches right off the bat. Mm -hmm. um, but so what we try and do is with all the customers, we wanna make sure we're two things, fair to the client and fair to the driver. So when people order from a restaurant or an aggregator, they have a delivery fee and we don't want it when that delivered driver shows up the restaurant to be like this is horrible like i love that they're here to deliver it but i'm just getting like i'm getting charged too much and it's not good we want them to be excited that they got another catering order and they're putting more revenue into their pocket so we work with each brand partner to to work within the constraints of what their existing delivery fee is so they're happy when the drivers show up right they're happy that food's going out the door but to counter that we want to make sure that we're paying the driver fairly for the order so we know what it costs for us to execute an order and then we know what our risk is as far as our contractual obligations for if the order is late or if it's messed up or dropped off at the wrong place and we work that into into the mo uh, model as well to make sure that we keep our margins and then that kind of we do that math and that's what backs out to to set those base fees uh the biggest thing is just kind of making sure like i said that the driver is compensated you know fairly for that uh and between the base fee and the tip to have that average earning fall into our window of what we like at 35 to 45 dollars uh per order i think right now we're like 37 or maybe 42 uh average earning per order and i know a lot of people are gonna be like oh i get is 20 dollar orders we well, probably haven't taken 10 orders yet so like the small orders come uh, you're gonna with know bed. you got the 10 orders when they see you that package when they see you that package in the mail you did 10 orders right exactly okay. exactly and to add on to that my, my other question on top of that is is there ever some times where the customer does not tip great question we get this a lot in the chat uh those drivers will see an order and say like this should have a 10 percent tip on it all caterings always have a 10 percent tip on it after five years pretty much exclusively in the catering delivery space uh, 
further from the truth. Maybe in other apps that subsidized cost or were funded, maybe they just did that. For us, it's about 40% of orders we identify as no or under tipped. So 40% of customers just don't just don't do it. And it could be a mix of things. Where they're ordering from doesn't prompt for a tip. Uh, some companies don't don't allow tipping. Pharmaceutical reps only have X amount of budget per person. Food cost is high, so they, they can afford they the food. They get, yeah. Right. They have so many people to feed. If it comes between making the sale of that pharma equipment or tipping the driver, they're, they're going to try and sell that pharma equipment or that drug. So uh, what we do, though, is if an order is under tipped or not tipped enough, we match that out of our pocket. So the lowest tip you'll see on an order is $10. And that means uh, if a customer tips zero or tips five, we're either putting 10 bucks in there or we're putting five bucks in there. And we've worked with some of our ordering partners that send us orders. They help offset some of that cost. Some don't. We just do it. Uh, but we want to make sure that, you know, again, we're not exploiting the gig workforce and we're making sure people are, uh, you know, getting paid fairly for what they do. And we don't advertise it in the app like you would never know this is a tipped order. Or this is a non tipped order because uh, we don't want the customer being treated any different. Right. We don't want any, there to be any like disdain for them. Well, you didn't tip anyway. So why am I going to set this up? So we just hide it. We just throw it in there. It is what it is. If it comes down between us making our margin or 50 percent of our margin, then we're going to make the 50 percent of our margin um, and then we'll make our full margins on that other 60 percent of the orders so it's it's just a balance right it's what's doing it's balancing what's doing right versus you know the financial responsibilities you heard here first from the horse's mouth hey that's his words baby so sometimes these people don't be tipping we all know that we all know that these people don't tip sometimes question number 10 we are here getting it in We're about to get some dividends do a hundred percent of the tip go to the driver Yes, 100%. Uh, all the tip goes to the driver. Uh, like I said, even the orders that don't have enough tip, we put into it. Um, we're not in the game of moving things around. Sometimes orders will change, right? Like we get a lot of pushback. Customers can modify their order after we send it. So when a text message goes out, there's the word um, projected earnings. And they're projected because that's what we think they're going to be. The customer can always change it. And a lot of times the, the base fee is tied to the subtotal. So if the order gets changed and they drop 50 bucks and it brings it under a threshold, then your base fee could drop. If the customer changes their headcount and their headcount was tied to their tip percentage based, the tip will drop. Those earnings will change. We're not changing it. We're not doing it to be spiteful. We're not doing it to put more money in our pocket. Uh, in a non-conceited way, the company is profitable. It does well. We don't need to steal tips or anything like that to make to make our money. We do it, you know, the right way with the base fees. We've even said no to working with restaurant partners that split tips with their kitchen staff uh, and their and their delivery drivers just because uh, we don't feel that's really fair for the driver. So uh, I can say with an emphatical no, we do not. With that being said, restaurants can put in what they want for order tips, you know. So there may be instances where it happens, but it's nothing that's coming from from our app or our tech. Yeah. Y'all heard what he said. Look, they ain't still no tips. I know that y'all, everybody be thinking they still need tips. They, I know, I know, I know. They ain't still no tips. He just told you. Question number one, one. We are here getting the job done. How do they contact customer service to fix an issue with trying to sign into the app? Yeah, so the easiest way is through text messaging. It's 844-515-2932. Uh, Say it again. 844-515-2932. One more again. 844-515-2932. Remember that. So you can text that. You can call that. Uh, if you call in and you're having a, a question about an issue with the app, uh, it's option number two that'll connect you with our driver engagement folks, and they'll help you get that resolved. I know some people are having uh, issues logging into like the open order board. Sometimes uh, people have issues logging into the app. Uh, we also have delivered.io slash educate. Uh, and that is a knowledge base for drivers that can answer some simple questions on uh, when, like when payments go out, how to reset passwords, you know, fun stuff like that as well. But anything above that or anything that you can't find on the Educate website, there's always humans there to help. And that's one thing that, that I'm proud of 
in the organization. We have a lot of automation, like the open order board, right? Like Frederick, who assigns all the orders, uh, the automated wait times that we just rolled out. So lots of cool automation, but to be successful, I think we need to balance that automation with that human, human ability, that human connection. And the computer can do a lot for us, but I think having the availability for real people to answer real questions is super important and that's not, that's not gonna go anywhere. So they're, uh, they're there to help. I definitely agree. It is way better with actually humans answering the questions versus a robot. I know that y'all have to add the robot in there because they gotta do a majority of the work. When it comes to real questions that need to be answered right on the spot, it's always best to have a human in the place. Hey, put him in the trunk, let him fill the base. Question number 12, weigh it up and put it on the scale. Question number 12 is, if they are on the waiting list, is there anything they can do to expedite the process? So for the wait list, we need to do a better job. And I'll be the first to admit it. We need to communicate better with the drivers that are on the wait list uh, about like what a projected date that it could open back up is. Uh, and just keeping in communication, like just letting you know that we know you're there and we're working on it. And it's a hard balance, right? Especially right now, because it is the summertime. It is a little bit slower. So we want to be fair to the existing drivers on the platform to make sure that they have the best opportunity to make money before we open it back up and what's crazy is like most of these most of the drivers that are on the wait list are there like organically which means we're not paying we don't have a lot of search ads right now out for recruiting of drivers there are people that are watching videos like yours or you know others and and finding out about the app when they're seeing a driver at a restaurant picking up another order so which is awesome right i love it so I would imagine that the wait list should start to open up in the in the fall, like once we get into that ramp up and like it gets busy again. Um, there's nothing anybody can really do to make themselves get on the, the wait list fast or get through the wait list faster. But just know that we know you're there. We want to get you on the platform. Uh, we just want to make sure it's fair and, and know that you waiting now means that if it gets saturated again, we're not going to dwindle your orders just because other people are on the, you know, other people are trying to sign on to the app. So I guess it's one of those like it sucks, but it's fair. And last so. but not least, question number 13. We are getting this green. What happens if the restaurant forgets an item? Does the driver get paid to go back or do they just refund the customer? So it's a great question. It all depends on the where the order came from, the order source. It also depends on the item that was sent or the item that was missing, right? So if you're taking a $250 order and you have $235 worth of that order with you and they forgot, uh, I don't know, one side of this or you know one of the two salads, there's a chance that the ordering partner is going to say just deliver it because it's not worth impacting the majority of the food. Now, if you're taking a dish and the restaurant forgot to package the protein, like the chicken for it, that's probably going to be something that they're going to, the customer is going to want. It's going to be like a requirement for their meal. So the, the request would be for the driver to go back. Outside of the base fee, and the, uh, the base fee and the tip, there's a couple other ways drivers can earn on the platform. One is what we call a re-delivery fee. So the second a driver leaves, if they have to turn around and go back to pick up a missing item, uh, even if they haven't made it to the delivery yet, they get a re-delivery fee. Uh, we pay extra mileage over 10 miles uh, is 50 cents per mile. Um, we pay tolls between the delivery and the pickup. So anything, once you've picked up the food and are taking it to delivery, if there's a toll on your order, uh, that is paid as well. And then we pay a cancellation fee. If the order cancels within an hour of your pickup, you get paid a flat rate. And if the order cancels when you have reached your pickup, you are paid the full amount, whatever that base fee and that tip is, because you did your part, right? It's not the restaurant, it's not the driver's fault that the restaurant didn't get the order or the customer canceled the order or whatever those extenuating circumstances were outside of that. So uh, those are a couple different ways, but I know wait time's a big thing as well. After 15 minutes, we start billing wait time to the restaurants. Uh, so drivers get that. We've automated that uh, to make it easier for the drivers to increase some earnings and get compensated while they're waiting. Uh, so, I mean, really long answer to a really short question. No, so 
you so is there a certain certain number certain amount like the amount that you pay per like if you have to re-deliver something or the wait time is it a set in stone yeah so the re-delivery fee i believe is uh 15 to the driver a cancellation fee under an hour is 15 dollars to a driver wait time is a quarter a minute it should break out to like 15 bucks an hour if you waited a full hour and that kicks in after 15 minutes of waiting from the pickup time um so those are kind of the set things and then as far as like a set like a set amount for like if it's worth it for the re-delivery or not that's up to each like ordering partner that's kind of like uh scenario by scenario so since you guys stuck around to stay down let's you know we ain't playing around my guy chris right here the owner, founder, CEO of Deliver will be giving away a $100 Amazon gift card. In order to earn your chance to win some of these dividends, this is what you must do. You must write in the comment section, Deliver. D-L-I-V-R-D, we about to pull up right now so we can get this cheese Deliver app. You must comment below and type in Delivered. D-L-I-V-R-D. You also must smash that like button. And you must be subscribed. If you ain't subscribed, I don't know what to tell you, baby. If you, must, if you ain't subscribed, you're not earning your chance to win some of these $100. Now, after that, what we're going to do is, in the next video, we are going to use this app, and it's going to randomly pick one of your guys' comments, and you will win that 100 bucks if you hating so what. But I appreciate you, my guy Chris uh, for coming out and checking us out in Chicago. And he actually did a delivery with us. What other app do you know that done that? Comment below and let me know. If I'm lying, I'm flying. I ain't seen it before, and I watch a lot of YouTube. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, if you are not subscribed, make sure you smash the subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up, and do not skip those ads. And like it tomorrow, because we're this bag. Why we can match this bag? It's 2023. It's big bag season. We'll keep on giving a reason. I'll see you guys on the next one. We're going, we're going, we're flowing. You already know it. It's DDK, and I'm on my way.